On this Tobacco University video, we're going to go over understanding watts, volts, and amps for cannabis production in relation to utilizing grow lights. So you think it's as easy as plugging a light in? Let's go over and understanding some of the watts, volts, and amps that you might have in your grow lights so you can be efficient with your production. So first off, amps, uh, looking at the generalness here of the amps, refers to the flow of the current. Think of it as the flow of water in a pipe. The flow rate of amps will determine the available amount of electricity to the electrical system. The number of available amps determines the amount of lights that can be operated at one time. Very important if you're in a larger grow area to know how many amps can you supply, how many grow lights can you support for your area. Growers need to know what amp service they have available and also what electrical appliances they have in addition to the grow room lights to know how many lights can be safely uh, supported if or if a system upgrade is needed. So while we think about our lights, and that is an important consideration, do we have any water pumps also to consider? Do we have any um, other things that are consuming electricity that we need to be aware of to don't just think about the lights, we have hum humidifier, dehumidifier, you know, water pumps, uh, all sorts of other things that may require electricity. We also have extra amps are a good thing. So keep in mind that if whatever your system is, you don't want to push your electrical system to the max. For example, while a 1000 watt um, light operating at 120 volts requires 8.3 amps, growers should allow and calculate as if it was consuming 10 amps, as this will reduce the chance of system overload and increase the reliability of the electrical system. So you might be familiar with your panels here, knowing how many amps, knowing where the circuits are. Um, what's kind of the rule of thumb when you go through and calculating this? Well, the general, in general, when calculating for a 1000 watt grow light, 120 volt circuit uses 10 amps, 240 uses about 5 amps, it would be about half the total of amps um, as the volts there double. Also, operating any circuit at 80% of capacity is a good idea in the sense that it will reduce the chance of burning anything out. It will allow some wiggle room in case there's increased amount of energy consumption at initial startup. So again, it's just always good to play it on the safe side. Don't push it to the absolute theoretical max. So I mentioned volts there. Let's talk about them a little bit more. Volts does relate to amps. So the higher the voltage, the less amps that are needed to operate the device, but it does not mean they will cost less to operate. Common misconception. When the operating voltage is increased, the number of amps or the current will also decrease, but the amount of power or watts will, required will remain the same. So again, this is often kind of this misnomer there of should I go run on 140 volts or 200, 240 volts? If I run it in 240, I'm consuming less amps as we can see you know, right, right here. If I'm running at 120 volts, 10 amps, 240, oh, only five. But keep in mind the wattage, still a thousand watt light in this example would still be the same and that's what you're charged with. So again, running one versus another is not gonna reduce any sort of cost when we're looking at energy consumption. So mentioning those uh, watts here, watts does refer to the power needed uh, or used. Most growers will calculate their growing space and then determine the number of watts needed to sufficiently light that area. To provide 50 watts per square um, feet, foot over a 10 by 10 area, the grower would need to supply about 1,000 watts of lighting, just to give you one little math kind of quick comparison there. Now we're comparing watts efficiency. So this is kind of where it comes into, you know, a lot of the new lights, a lot of lights are stating their efficiency, which is a great thing for growers to be able to compare. So watts can also be used to determine the gross base overall efficiency, as many growers will talk in grams per watt produced. To compare different lighting options, the lighting efficiency in terms of PAR, which is again photosynthetically active radiation per watt is often used since this offers an effective way to compare the efficiency of different lighting options. Uh, not only looking at the lighting, but looking at the bulbs used, looking at the type or style of lighting, looking at the reflector being used, uh, what type of grow area, are there walls, are there grow tent walls, or mylar walls, are there lenses being used, and what the power supply is. All these can have an impact there on the total watts use efficiency. Now, what's the volt scenarios? If a grower has a thousand watt grow light, in situation one, grower has a 120 volt system, they will need 8.3 amps to support this light. 
If the grower has a 240 volt system, they'll only need half of that or 4.16 amps to support that light. So again, it's important to keep that in mind that the um, volts can impact the amount of amps that are needed, but essentially in the end, you're looking at a very similar watt consumption, and that's usually what you're charged with. So that's not gonna reduce your overall cost. And make sure you buy the right, you purchase the right light for your um, uh, electrical service. Now, 120 or 240 volts, this gets, again, a lot of attention here of which one's better, which one should I choose? I don't know. This one reduces my amps. So when operating grow room on 240 volts, you can operate twice as many lights on the same amperage than if you're operating on 120 volts. So typically, larger operations will stick with the 240 volts. With either voltage, the lighting system will still require that 1,000 watts or power, so essentially both voltages will cost the same to run. With the 240, usually allows growers to run a few more lights there. Now keep in mind, you just can't buy one and decide you're going to flip the other. There are different outlets. So the manufacturers have come to a consensus to make it easier to prevent people from plugging the wrong light into the wrong socket. You'll notice that there's different shapes to the outlets to prevent you from making that mistake. Now watt hours, so a company's bills based on the watts, so uh, different voltages uh, do not save money directly. So just keep that in mind that just because you're using less amperage does not mean it's gonna cost you less uh, to run. So the appliance wattage versus the operating time in hours versus the watts used. So little calculations here that you can apply to your own specific lights that you might be using. So when comparing watts, lights, and volts, there are these mathematical equations just provide you with a couple, kind of the triangle here is very common. This kind of provides you with the same information here. Watts divided by volts is amps. Watts divided by amps is volts. Watts um, equals volts times amps. So again, just a little comparison there. If you wanted to go ahead and do some independent calculations for your own specific growing conditions, this is the information you would go to.